number six bristle brush. I'm going to rinse it out good from any previous paint that was in there. Or the number six bristle, either four or the six, either one is fine for this. Now we're going to just take pure burnt sand. Now this is the color, that's that reddish brown here that most of you should be familiar with. Very common, very used full color. And what you're going to do now is you're just going to come in here like this on the side, on the corner, we'll call the chisel corner, and you're just going to go through now like this, and you start adding some of the warmer hues in this for the leaves. And see, it's just little, see little touches like this. Now this has to do with how much color you want. I don't know. I mean, some people like their, their fall colors to be warmer, softer, yellower, golder. Red, some like them oranger, redder. Peachy, uh, it just it really doesn't matter. The key is to get enough balance and to get enough variation of leaves. And you put some down through here and you work up through here. And then it's all, the next step is the, the lighter colored leaves, which really gives this painting its flavor. Now I'll go along here and I'll put a whole bunch of these scattered all through. Down high, down up low. This, now this takes quite a while. I suspect most of you will spend much more time than I'm, I'm going to show you on the show here or on the program. But I'll tell you, one of the things you'll do is stand back every once in a while and say, well, it's a little dense right there. I need to spread this out or I need to add some more color. This is not something you're going to finish in a heartbeat, I promise you. But you will get a lot of it in a position that will give you confidence that you're on the right track. Then just study it. See, there's, there's leaves everywhere. I mean, they're just scattered sometime a little bit less. You know, they're more dense in some spots, a little more sparse in others. See, I'm come over here now, add some. See how quick I'm working? These are little comma strokes, by the way, folks. This is not a particularly hard stroke to learn to do. It's just little commas. And again, I'm not copying this painting exactly. I just don't like to do that. Oh, it's very similar, obviously, because we have a guide to follow, and it's an instructional thing, so I don't want to deviate to the extreme, but I'm putting a little more warmer hue in this. I always, I've done this painting on several occasions, similar versions, but I've never put one with a little more warmer colors. It's always bordered on a more gold and yellow side, so I thought this time we'd go maybe just a little more on the orange or reddish side, so I like this rust in here, which is a good complement to this painting. So we get some of the darker, more rust colored things in here, and then we come back and add the other stuff. This is so exciting. Yeah, I know that thing's driving everyone crazy. So you want to get a little overlap right through here. And remember, as leaves hit the sky, when they get become individual and the sun hits them, they get sort of a transparent look to them. Sometimes they just sort of disappear. That's why when you start doing this, you don't want them all to have that same basic look. Some of them will be a little lighter. Some will be a little darker. Some will be richer. Some will be, oh gosh, we're going to have all kinds of flavors. And because of the lens, it always is a beautiful thing about this. See the night right here where I'm going like this? Well, see how nice and soft those are? Well, that's a result of the linseed oil being underneath. When we put that on earlier, they, yeah, that gave that a nice, a, a little bit of a transparency effect. Okay, there's quite a bit of this sienna color up and through here. Let's kind of start down into the main body a little bit and then work your way up into the main part of the tree here. Scattering this around just a tad bit more. You see how repetitive this is? Now I think it's a I think it's great fun. I love to get focused on this and just really go through and have a good time working these in. But some of you may not enjoy this too much because it is so repetitive. 
but painting is like that. You can't always paint it just like you want it. You gotta spend the time. Every painting has a different set of criteria and problems and issues and solutions. Look where I'm holding my brush to, way back towards the end. You have a whole lot more control if you'll do that, folks, I promise. The further back you hold your brush, the much better off you'll be. Now, I've done a lot of this right now, and I'm gonna get off this, we're gonna start putting some of the real bright ones in here. The reason for that is because I want you guys to see how this is gonna start developing. I'm not quite ready for the, all the bright ones yet. And again, with the magic of TV, I'll probably be taking a break from this a little bit. I'll probably do a little bit uh, just to kind of speed up the process some. So if all of a sudden in one of our, you see some leaves on there, that's because I've taken a break and I've added some just to speed up the process some. So don't worry about that. Let's come through here. See, I'm making a transition from this area up to this area. And then gradually we just build. Now already you stand back and look at this, really taking on a nice effect. I love this look. Now let's go down here to our palette. We're going to mix a color real quick. And this is just going to be our color that we use for the bright colored leaves. So take your knife. Just take some yellow and some orange. Basically all you want to do. Mix them together. A few drops of linseed oil. Get that really creamy. Now again, this color's up to you. You, you have what we call in the art world artistic license. Anything you want to do color-wise, as long as it fits into the technical realm of accuracy, you're going to be fine. And you can use just about any of these yellows, golds, reds, siennas, whatever. Now this is the orange side. We'll come back in with some more gold and yellow ones in a little bit. Okay, now you take your brush and you rinse it out real good. And you want that mixture to be very creamy. That's really important. And remember, you get all the moisture sucked out whenever you do this. And you just load your brush kind of heavy, stand back, start laying in the little highlights like this. Now, I would suggest that you wipe out your brush now and then because you start picking up some of that dark color after oh, a few strokes, you'll want to do that. But see, just pop in some bright ones like this in different places. And then as your brush starts to run out of paint, you put that in areas where you want less conspicuous bright colors. Like that in here, you know, you probably want to add a few dull uh, gold ones, or orange ones. But, you know, you just want to get a little variety going here. Wipe your brush, reload. And you just keep piling on the paint. And see, by mixing those two together, you kind of create a gold color that, you know, you didn't have before, which I think is kind of cool. paint going on here, folks. Little commas. And these commas go every direction. The good news is, and don't take it so literal, I have a few students that every time I say something they take it literal and they just make the same comma over and over. These are commas, but these commas are going every direction. They're not just stuck in one spot, in one angle. That's when your tree gets monotonous. You don't want that. You want this nice combination of different directions to this because that's what makes it look really exciting. To the leaves look like they're being blown in the wind. You get those different color from the light hitting them. And some are a little bigger, some are a little smaller. There's just a lot of stuff going on here, folks, that really makes this a nice painting. Already at this stage, we're closing in on it. It's really taking on a nice effect. 